What is up, No Face Gang? Max Van Gelly here, and today we're gonna talk about dynamic compression. I know a lot of you guys have used this plugin or this plugin for your side chaining or your typical compressor inside your DAW, but today I'm gonna show you something special, especially for you Ableton Live users, how to get creative with dynamic side chaining using Max for Live. Let's dive in. Hey, what's up, guys? Today I am going to show you how to sidechain applying the dynamic EQing concept. A lot of you guys have probably seen. Um, Ozone has a really good dynamic EQ, and basically, the way it works is it triggers the EQ, like so. If you look at it here, look at the bass. So as you can see, it's actually almost automating the EQ essentially. So it's kind of working exactly like uh, a side chain would essentially. But the problem with side chaining a bass line, if we use like a Nicky Romero side chain, for example, like so. The level of control of these frequencies are practically impossible to figure out because it's it's a very general duck of the peak essentially. It's kind of like peaking, it's kind of like ducking the peak essentially, bringing it down. But the thing is, the most important thing about side chaining is obviously having the kick and the bass work well together where the bass ducks out of the way when the kick comes in. So that's not a very precise way to side chain. Uh, if, um, you know, for those of you guys that are super, you know, specific about those kind of things. Now, you probably might say, okay, um, we can slap a compressor, an Ableton compressor in our case, and actually trigger the side chain from the main kick here. Right, so you're gonna basically uh, trigger this side chain from this main kick right here, labeled main kick. This is our kick. So now we are triggering it. So you have a bit of a bit more control essentially on the precision of the frequency docking to make sure that they glue well together. Okay. So in this case, it works like this. You can adjust the ratio. Attack, release, a lot of things. Now, this is a lot more precise, 100%. It's a bit trickier to nail it exactly correct. But I'm going to show you a third way that a lot of people are not implementing that is absolutely so precise and there's so much precision in this side chaining method that I almost apply it to anything. So let's go ahead and erase this and let's take a look at our sub and let's take a look at our kick. And if we play them together, As you can see, there is a lot of low end frequency conflictions, essentially. So what we're going to do is essentially first establish the peak of our kick. Okay, so let's go to our kick and let's open up a spectrum analyzer. You could just drop it in. It's uh, it comes with Ableton. And look, let's look at exactly where it's hitting. So we're looking at about 60 Hertz. So if you look down here, if we're going to look at here, we're looking at about 60 Hertz where the kick is kicking. Kick is uh, peaking essentially. So what you want to do is you're going to go ahead and go back to your kick, your sub, and you're going to put an EQ here. Okay, so we're going to select this here and we're going to mark this at 60. That's where we're peaking. Let's double check again. Yep, 
Yep, 60 hertz. So we're gonna go to our kit, our bass, our sub. This is a problem because as you can see that our sub is also peaking at 60, right? So what we wanna do is we want to bring this down. So this is much better, of course, but we don't want to just simply EQ it. What we want to do is we create a dynamic. What we want to do is create a dynamic EQ here, essentially, which almost works like ducking. So it's not constantly keeping it down, but where this is, you know, maneuvering up and down, creating a uh, more of a, a pump. And uh, so it feels a bit more natural. So what you want to do is if you have not downloaded Max for Live, I urge you guys to do it. There's a really cool tool called LFO. Comes with it. I'm I'm almost positive it's completely free with all Ableton Live users. It is a free tool. You can just download Max for Live. And here's what it does. We are going to basically map this LFO to any frequency range that we want, essentially. So let's put this on the gain, right? So we're going to click this map and we're going to click it on the gain and look what's happening. Obviously, we do not want this to be maneuvering like this because it would be a mess. Right. So unless you're uh, trying to get creative with it, the first thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that this never goes over the ceiling and only pulls it down, not ever up. So what you want to do is you want to go to the soft set. And you're going to basically pull this offset down like this. And then you're going to also control the depth, how deep it goes. And pull it all the way down, just like that. Maybe offset a little bit back. So yeah, there you go. There you go. Around 30. Right. So since this is not exactly consistent with the kick, we want to make sure that we want to put this to match with the tempo. So you're going to go ahead and click this and you're going to go to one fourth. There you go. One, two, three, four. So as you can see, if you move this down, if you move the tempo down, it keeps going down and is snapped to the tempo. So if we're at 125, for example, this is where we're at, and we're going to go ahead and play this together. Now, the reason why this is awesome, because now we can really control this frequency. It's at 60, but let's say we want to sharpen the cue a bit. So we don't want to grab that much, right? So we want to maybe do it like this and maybe even have less of a depth, or maybe we want a lot of depth. So maybe we want so much depth that it goes all the way down essentially, but let's, let's put less of a depth, just, just like that. Nice and easy. Okay. So now let's hap let's, let's see what happens if we un unmute this. I mean, clearly, clearly much, much better. And the best part about all this is that the amount of precision that you can do here is so incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Now, let's see what we could do with applying the same tactic, except to a lead, for example. So let's say that we want to basically, we don't like the high end of that and we want to duck it a little bit. So we're going to go EQ again. We're going to put an LFO tool. And we're going to basically control these high ends because we really don't. Let's say we don't like, let, let, for, for exaggeration, let's pretend that this lead is like this. I mean, quite harsh and ugly, and we really just want to control that. So what we're going to do is we are actually going to kind of mimic this curve that we have here, 
well, we're not, we're, we don't really know what that curve is going to be, but we assume that it's going to be on the high end that the frequencies are coming in hot. So what you want to do is you're going to basically put this at zero and then you're going to map number four. You're going to map the gain essentially, right? There you go. So you're going to click map and you're going to click on the gain. So you're literally just, let me just do that again. So you guys can, uh, can understand, uh, it better. So you're going to click map and then you're going to map the knob that we're trying to map. So it's going to be gain in our case here. So, okay. So obviously we don't want it to be going up and down like this. We just want it to be ducking down, right? So we're going to offset this again, like we talked about, bring down the depth. We're going to offset this like this. Okay, there you go. And now let's say we don't want to necessarily like even put this to tempo and just kind of leave it like that. Let's look at it now. Maybe we want less of a duck. So there you go. Let's put maybe just like this offset this a bit less. There you go. Look at that. And without it. Now, obviously we would never be doing it like this. We'd probably set it to the same tempo, you know, which is the one fourth offset this properly, you know, lower the depth, however you want it. And there you have it. You have full control. You can really, really, you know, get this going. Like for example, you can put another LFO and for example, let's say that there is some frequency that's really bothering you in this range that you want it really dipped you know, so what we're going to do is we're going to map this, we're going to put it here, offset this down. So it, you know, pulls down, obviously, just like that on its own tempo. There you go. Look, you can really create a lot of cool stuff with this. I mean, this is almost like playing a video game, honestly, finding like the sweet spots where you can kind of control the depth uh, with this LFO tool. Now, again, like I said, there's uh, an easier way to do this, maybe per se using a fab filter or uh, dynamic EQ from Ozone, which are phenomenal choices. But if you want to have fun and mo more control in Ableton for absolutely free, this is how you do it. I hope you guys learned something new today. Uh, be sure to follow us and check out more videos and uh, leave a comment down below and let us know what you think.